8,000 investment clubs. These are amateur sort of right. average people just investing. These investment clubs, 62% of them, of these clubs, beat the market. In the decade of the 80s, only 25% of professionals beat the market. Right. Welcome to this video. Subayal here. Over here, Peter Lynch points out that many investors focus on the events that emerge like mushrooms in the complex world and are driven by so many variables that they are impossible to predict. Therefore, it is a useless exercise to focus on them. He emphasizes on the fact that we would be much better off if we focus on things like the fundamentals of a company, its past performance, its durable competitive advantage, and key ratios which will increase the probability of success in our investing decision. Therefore, focusing on the business itself and its fundamentals is more important than focusing on the complex and dynamic macroeconomic landscape. It is surprising to him that many Wall Street analysts are so attached to basing their investing decisions on the short-term volatility that is mainly due to market sentiment and other events external to the firm. That is the very reason that amateurs who analyze the companies by calculating the intrinsic value of the stock and wait patiently for the opportunity to buy the stock when it trades below the intrinsic value with margin of safety taken into account do much better than the professionals who are focused on factors external to the firm. And obviously I didn't make a great impression because the percent of people's assets involved in the stocks has gone down. In 1960, people had 40% of their financial assets, including their house, yeah. in stocks and mutual right. funds. In 80, that was down to 25%. It's now down to 17%. And why do you think that is? Well, I think people, in the decade of the 80s was the best decade this century for stocks. I think people managed to lose money in the 80s doing it themselves because their, their methods were so flawed. So I, th I really feel as though I wanted people to understand. I don't want anybody to buy a stock. I'm saying if you're yeah. going to buy a stock, you should do certain things. Right. If you're not willing to do these things, you should leave your money in the bank. Yeah. Your, your philosophy is, is simple, and I'm remembering this from the previous book. I right. think we're now talking about the previous book. Correct. Your right. philosophy was if you find something that you identify with. I remember right. there was a story yep. of yep. your wife and her hose. Yep. Your wife oh, kept saying, legs these are oh, you legs, got it. Yep. legs and panties. Your wife said, these are the greatest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Right. right. And when your wife said that, you knew that this was a product that right. was better. Right. You used to stay at La Quinta Motel. Right. And the right. service yep. was better, whatever yep. was better. Yep. Right. The and price so, is good. And too. the price was good, too. Yep. And you said, this is a place right. that I can determine. Right. I, Peter right. Lynch, right. Right. can tell that this is a good product, right? That's right. If these people make it a good product, then their earnings are going to go up. Therefore, the stock's going to go up. Right. That's the kind of decision-making process you ought to go through. Right. Do I have it? You've got it exactly right. Well, I, do, I don't think people understand there's a 100% correlation with what happens to a company's earnings over several years and what happens to the stock. If the company, McDonald's, has done very well as a company, right. the stock has done very well. Here, Peter Lynch emphasizes on the importance of imposter syndrome, meaning people don't value what they know. Due to this, many of my friends who have in-depth knowledge of software industry will be inclined to buy stocks that are in the energy sector or any other sector that they don't understand. Remember that your circle of competence is your unfair advantage or competitive edge. So try to invest in companies that lie within your circle of competence. At least do your research and know the fundamentals of the company well before investing in it. Don't buy a stock just because your neighbor or a friend has invested in it. This is the easiest way to evaporate your capital in the air. People worry about too much money supply, what's happened to the price of oil, whether, who's the president, <laughs> who's being nominated for the Supreme Court, it's all the ozone earnings. layer. It has nothing to do. McDonald's earnings go up the next 10 years, the stock will go yeah, up. But what they will say to you, Peter, is that, as you know, and why am I telling you this, but anyway, it's fun to tell you this, they're telling you that these other things influence the amount of earnings of a particular company. Yep. If we're in a recession, people right. are not going to spend That's as right. much money on going to the movies Absolutely. or whatever they do. Right. Right. And, and therefore, you've got to pay attention to these right. other things because yep. they impact on earnings. They are very important, but you have no idea of knowing what they're going to do. Alan right. Greenspan's the head of the Federal Reserve. Right. He cannot predict interest rates. Yes. He'd be the first to tell He can you. influence them, but he can't predict them. He cannot predict what long-term interest rates are going to be one year from now, two years from now, three years from now. He's even surprised how low they are now. Right. So how am I supposed to predict interest rates? How am I supposed to predict the economy? You certainly remember the recession of 82. Yes. 1982, we had a 20% prime rate, 14% unemployment, 12% inflation. I don't remember anybody telling me in 1980 or 81 that was going to happen. Yeah. All of a sudden, we had the worst recession since the Depression. 
I didn't read about it in the paper. So it's crazy to think about these things. Here's a quote from you. I own Dunkin' Donuts. When you own Dunkin' Donuts, you don't have to worry about Korean imports. You don't have to worry about M2 or M3. These are money supply figures, right. aren't they? Yep. And, and what's happening to the money supply? This is the way you make money. If you don't understand what the company does, you should not be in it. If you could predict the stock market, you could predict the economy, you could predict interest rates. If you go buy the wrong stocks, you're going to lose half your money anyway. Right. Yeah. You, I, I, I'm saying people have natural advantages. Yeah. Let's say what you do for a living is you're involved in the restaurant industry. Right. You supply paper products. You, right. you supply kitchen equipment. You help build restaurants. Right. You saw McDonald's. You saw Chi Chi's. You saw Chili's. You saw Cracker Barrel. You saw Dunkin' Donuts, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell. These are all these success were, stories. These were 40-fold. 40, 40 you made 40 or 50 times your yeah. money. You don't need to make that kind of money many times in your life, right? Yeah, no, no. That's all you had to do was follow the restaurant industry. Yeah. People are in industries. They're in the publishing industry. They're in the chemical industry. The paper. Why don't they just stay with that industry? You only need a few stocks a decade. How many good stocks do you need in a lifetime? <laughs> Instead of people, they're in the restaurant industry. They're buying biotechnology stocks. Right. The people in the chemical and they industry. Know nothing about know nothing biotech. About the people in the chemical industry are buying oil stocks. Right. It's absolutely absurd. <laughs> people don't understand their natural advantages, yeah. and they don't use them. So th that's that's bad. Number one, but worse. Number two. Is they do, if you don't think you're a good ice skater, or if you're convinced you're not a good cellist, you're not going out and try it. But people are buying stocks anyway. Yeah. They're not discouraged. They just think it's a gamble. Yeah. So therefore, they go forward and they, they bet on one stock for a week and a half, and it goes up, and they, they make $2 on it. Then they sell it, and they buy something else. When three years is over, all they've done is generate a lot of commissions, and they've probably lost money. That's a mistake. So your advice is what? If you don't understand a company, yeah. if you can't explain it to a 10-year-old right. in two minutes or less, <laughs> yes. don't own it. Because when it goes down, let's say the stock goes down two points. You won't understand what's going on. What do you do? Do you buy more? Do you, do you, yeah. do you flip and, a coin? And chances are your broker doesn't either? You, they, he, he or she certainly doesn't know yeah. about it. <laughs> I mean, who knows what advanced, yeah. what all these things are, with auto back planes and mega flops. Who knows what all yeah. these things are? So buy what are. you know. Buy in your industry, buy what you know, buy local companies. Yeah, so, so suppose you, you don't have an industry. I mean, you know, you don't really... You, well, you buy com local companies, right. you, companies in your own industry. Ten years after Walmart went public, ten years after Walmart. Went public, ten years after it went public, it's a 25-year-old company now. Right. You could have bought the stock and made 50 times your money on it. 50 times. This is, if you bought it ten years after... After it, it was public already. Yeah. It had already gone up five-fold. So you could have made 250-fold. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, let's say you were in a town, they came into it and they said, Boy, these prices are great. They're doing terrific. Yeah. I like the bargains. And you checked it out. You spent a little bit of work on it. Yeah. I mean, people are very careful. They, when they buy a dishwasher, they do some research. They'll put $10,000 in some right. stock they hear on a bus. So if you did a little bit of research, you'd say, Walmart's in only 10% of the country. They're not even saturated there. Why can't they go to the rest of the country? Right. I picked 21 stocks early in 1992. Right. Some work, some don't. I follow those companies. Some of the companies, the fundamentals deteriorate. Some they improve. I watch those companies go through the year. I also explain the retail industry. I try and make it very simple. And I talk about a wonderful example. It's a seventh grade class. Yeah. The teacher of that read my book. And my first book that you were talking about, <laughs> you, you and I did a show on that That's in right, Washington. Right. You remember that show? Right, this is right. a long time ago. She read the book. And I said, if you made it through fifth grade math, <laughs> you can do it in the stock market. <laughs> she says, OK. She started teaching it in seventh grade, right. seventh grade class. These kids had to study companies. Right. They had to look at their balance sheets to see if they're solvent. Yeah. And they picked stocks. These stocks were up 69% over two years when the market was up only 20. And they picked stocks like Limited. They picked The Gap. They right. picked Walt. They understood these companies. They also picked IBM. I right. lost money on that, too. Yeah. I mean, everybody <laughs> makes mistakes. Everybody did, yeah. But I'm saying this, is, this, was, this was a school, St. Agnes' School in Arlington, Mass. Right. But in addition, in the decade of the 80s, there was 8,000 investment clubs. These are amateur sort of right. average people just investing. These investment clubs, 62% of them, of these clubs beat the market. In the decade of the 80s, only 25% of professionals beat the market. Also, Peter Lynch emphasizes on the fact that you don't need a very high IQ or you don't need to be a prodigy to do well in the stock market. The media has created a perception that investing is very complex and you need to be extremely talented and intelligent to be an investor. The opposite is true. You only need to focus on the right things. You need to know the way a business creates value, its competitive edge and the key ratios which will give you a good idea of its feasibility as a long-term value investment. Peter Lynch explains that when the students of the 7th grade were taught the concepts he explained in his investing book, the stocks they picked did excellent on average and beat the performance of most analysts. He also explained that out of the 8,000 investment club, 
clubs that existed in the 80s, 62 beat the market, while only 25% of the professional investors were able to beat the market during the same period. Therefore, focus on the fundamentals of the company and never get caught or base your investing decisions on what the Wall Street analysts or news in the media are telling you. I hope that you liked this video. Let me know in the comments below what was the most important lesson you learned in this video. Also, would you like me to make such videos in future? If you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing. That would mean world to me. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate that and I will see you in the next video.